The Frank Haith Show, brought to you by Don Thornton Cadillac, Pepsi, River Spirit, TTCU, The Credit Union, and St. Francis Health System. And now your host, Bruce Howard. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the Frank Haith Show. I'm Bruce Howard, joined by the head coach of the Golden Hurricane, Frank Haith. And coach, what a week. Can you put into words what this meant to your team to beat OSU and number 15 Kansas State this week at home? I think I'm going to say what a week, what you just said. It was, it was a great week. I thought our guys uh, played their tails off. We had uh, great atmosphere in the building. It, it was just a good, good week for TU Nation and our program and our players. Yeah, absolutely. And Tulsa won two games in different ways, and we'll detail that in a moment as we will have highlights of both the OSU and the Kansas State game. And then a little bit later on, we will have a feature segment on the Community Service Backpack Bash. That's all coming up on The Frank Haith Show. Welcome back to the Frank Haith Show. And uh, Coach, you get ready for Oklahoma State at home and certainly a great atmosphere, great crowd, and your team played well. Yes, no question. You know, an Oklahoma State team that's already beaten LSU, already beaten Memphis by 20, uh, you know, very capable team, very talented. Um, and obviously, you know, a rivalry. You know, yeah. played a lot of times against Tulsa. Uh, I thought our guys were really dialed in, ready to play. Absolutely. Hurricane taking on Oklahoma State. Only two other teams Tulsa has plays, played more than the Cowboys. And the atmosphere, as we mentioned, was great at the Reynolds Center. And part of it, too, was, you know, the OSU fans showed as well. So that, that, it really made for a raucous atmosphere. Didn't yeah, it? it was a lot of orange in the building. And, uh, but I thought our guys, uh, you know, played extremely. There's Quan early in the game. What we wanted to do, attack the paint, be strong with our drives. And there he is attacking right away. Against Utah, Jariah Horn really got off and had 15 second half points, and he continues here. Yeah, and that good, a paint touch, Elijah. Then we had him chasing closeouts, and he was able to get a wide open shot. And there's our spread pick and roll uh, action there with uh, Tap making a really nice pass to Martins and a, a really good finish. And as you can see, the Hurricane down by four here in the early going, but that's a nice play by Martin Zigmanov. Yeah, and just getting in the paint there and getting a rebound and good finish. I mean, they got a, they got some shot blockers in the paint area. That was a really good finish by Martins in the paint. Jariah Horn with the putback for TU, and that tied the game at 11. You know, Jariah early on gave us a boost. We've struggled scoring early, and he came off the bench and kind of got us going. There he is on a base play uh, with another wide open three. And that would give Tulsa their first lead, or their second lead, I should say, after Quan's basket early at uh, 16 to 15. And here he is again. Same play going a different direction. And uh, just, you know, you, you, you slip out of a ball screen and uh, we wanted their big guys to guard us on the perimeter a little bit. How important has Lawson Carita been to you? He's doing a little bit of everything. This game, he had a career high, and there, but he did a lot of things in this ball game to help us win this game. Good dish. Good pass inside, and Daquan Jeffries finishes. Paint touches, paint touches, paint touches. And this time it was Joyner who had the assist on the last play with a great drive inside. Elijah continues to get better. Yeah, and I think Elijah, along with you talk about uh, Lawson, had a really good ball game here. Uh, but that drive, and that's what Dry does, that pass. Dry is a very, very skilled big guy. You know, he can shoot it, he can, but he can also uh, pass it also. And the Hurricane here down the uh, stretch in the first half, down by one, and again, attacking the glass. And again, it was Jeffries who has who is attacked more since you gave him that little talk. Right? Yeah, and, and they get out in the passing lane, so they, they, they force you to, to, to dribble drive it. And uh, uh, really good finish there by the, the Quan. And you can see our numbers there. We shot 46% in the half. Uh, you know, assist turnovers were, were decent. We turned the ball over too much there to half. And, and we do shut that down in the second half. Yeah, and you forced a few turnovers, though, on OSU to kind of negate that some. We did, we did. And, and, and at least our turnovers weren't live ball, because that was concerning going into this game, live ball turnovers. Daquan Jeffries with an offensive rebound, and almost all, so many times that results in an open three, and, and current Scott nailed it for you. Yeah, one more pass by, uh, by Sterling there. This is a really nice play by Martin Zigbanu to locate the ball. Yeah, that, that you know, normally the ball don't fall strong side when it comes off of where the shot is taken from. And here's Carita following his own. Yeah, and, and good float, floater there by Lawson. 
So the hurricane's starting to pull away. This first, what, eight, seven, eight minutes of the second half were really key for you. Good execution, we were strong, we did, we, we were with the ball, we didn't turn, we got FTA every time, and then we executed. Nice drive and, and loss in that, and he can make that shot as a little floater. Yeah, that floater gives you uh, your uh, nine point lead, and then Jariah Horn open in the corner, and he nails that one for you. Good inside out play by Tap, and uh, you know, Jariah's shooting the ball well right now. And again, here's Lawson Carita. Nice strong play inside. Yeah, they had made a little run there. I think we had, we're up 12, and they had cut it to seven, and, we, and uh, Lawson with a nice strong drive and finish there. Every time Oklahoma State made a run during this period of time, somebody would make a play, and that time it was Sterling Taplin with his bag of tricks. Yeah, and that was his only basket in the game, but uh, he did a lot to help us win this ball basketball game. And uh, good uh, flat screen there, Bartons, and uh, you know, McGriff was in foul trouble, and, and, and Kern did a good job of going to take it right at him and finish it. Now they get a basket going the other way and start to cut into the lead. Your lead was as large as 12 in the second half, but you knew Oklahoma State would make a run, right? Yeah, there's no question. I mean, they're a good ball club. They're going to make a run, and, and, and uh, there's the kind of I'm off that um, uh, ball screen, and then set play here, and we needed a bucket. They cut the two, and good pass by Tap, and good finish by Daquan. Yeah, play of the day, because they had cut the lead to two, and Jeffries with the big high slam dunk for you, and we get another look at it. And that gets your lead back to five after he makes a free throw. Yeah, and we, you know, like I said, we were struggling scoring there. We had a couple uh, bad possessions, and then we needed that possession. And you know, they did, they wouldn't go away. They made some uh, deep threes here. There's the Zagua making a deep three off a of pistol action, and then um, you know, but I thought our execution here late, getting the ball in bounds, making free throws. What sort of things you have to do to win a ball game? You see us down two there, getting the ball in bounds, and Daquan uh, had good rhythm at the free throw line, making his free throws. But they keep coming back. They keep making three pointers. This one again cuts the lead down to two with 9.8 remaining. But you guys are pretty strong with the ball here. Huh? Yep, we got uh, yes, sir. We got the ball in Daquan there, and uh, he goes to the line, make uh, calmly makes two two big free throws. And so at four point lead. Again, they're looking to get something done in a hurry, and they do. They get that jump shot for three, which cuts it down to one with precious little time left. And again, you execute the inbound play, and that's not that easy sometimes with pressure. It isn't. It is, and we didn't have a timeout here late in the game, and then obviously Martin goes to the line. He had missed two free throws prior to that, and he makes two. We got a three-point lead, and we were going to foul here, but if it, once we got to a shot, not going to foul, and obviously good execution there. Yep, the fadeaway jumper no good, and you win 74-71. Huge victory for your team. Uh, you led it by one at halftime. You outscore them by two in the second half, and uh, boy, all those guys you see listed, plus the others, all very important in this win, huh? Just a really good, good hard-fought basketball game. I thought, you know, everything Oklahoma State threw at us, to, you know, we withstood it and made the plays we need to make to win the basketball game. So no question about it, a lot of positives uh, coming out of that game and hopefully momentum, right? Yeah, you know, coming off the tough loss at Utah, we got, got back home, got ourselves back going again. Absolutely, and then the Hurricane on Saturday playing host to number 15, Kansas State. Highlights from the Rental Center coming up next. Fellas, we were just tougher in the second half. Much tougher. So proud of you, how we competed. Big free throws down the stretch. That's how you win the game. Here's what we must do. We must build on this, right? Let's build on this. We got another Big 12 team coming here on Saturday. Hell yeah. yes, sir. Yes, sir. So yes, sir. it's a great opportunity. It's all it is, just embrace it. Embrace it. You'll be amazed at what we can accomplish this year. I promise you. All right? We're back on the Frank Haith Show. So after the big win over Oklahoma State, Coach, now you're getting ready to take on a Kansas State team that you know is really good defensively. Really good. Really good team. You know, obviously a lead eight team with five starters back, uh, all five starters back from that, that ball club, and, and just a physical, tough-minded, hard-nosed basketball team. Yeah, as you mentioned, a team that reached the Elite Eight, and you knew after last year's win in Wichita against those guys that they would be really ready to play against your team. Yeah, no, no question. I have a lot of respect for Bruce, and, and I knew they would be prepared, and they would come here ready to play. Bruce Weber's Kansas State Wildcats coming into the Reynolds Center, and 
They're ranked number 15 in one poll, number 16 in another poll, and uh, your team gets a bucket here early. Yeah, really good, you know, we set the step up ball screen, nice pass by Tap, uh, and, and a good finish by Martin's in the paint there. Again, the penetration in the kick, and Curran Scott nails the three for you. Opposite of Oklahoma State, we got off to a really good start in this ball game, uh, executing and getting good looks. Uh, and that's a tough shot, uh, tough, tough shot by Kern, but he made it, uh, but attacking, and we wanted to be aggressive. Yeah, at one point you were up 9-2, to two, and that's, that was one of the few times that uh, we saw a transition bucket in this yeah, game. Yeah, and there's Chris being a, with a nice, strong move, uh, attacking the paint. There's uh, Sterling doing what he does. You well, know, again, tough layups, again you know. ba a bag of tricks, Coach. Sometimes he does some things that you've not seen, and I've, I thought for all in the world he was going to pass that ball. I think K-State probably did too. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing play, and, uh, and he didn't travel. He didn't come down before flipping the ball up there, and there's Lawson Carita for you again. Put us up eight, you know, we're, get, we're getting good ball movement at this point in time, and uh, then we're making shots, you know. Uh, but they're, they're, that's their aggressive play. They're aggressive, all, they turn all the way to the hoop there, and he, he was able to be fierce and, and get that ball up on the rim. And this would be a game that, uh, as it went on, and here's a, a really good scramble play by uh, T.U. and Carita again. Yes. Yeah, and a nice pass by Kern, uh, slipping that ball out, and, uh, you know, big bucket. I was going to say, again, this game turns into a grinding game, doesn't it? It does. You know, they, they, there's their skip pass uh, to the corner, hitting a three, and it became like a back-and-forth tussle. Yeah, 25-24, Kansas State leads at halftime. I think that might have been their first lead of the game, but you see the shooting percentage is a whole lot different than in the game against Oklahoma State. How about yeah. 10 percentage points less? A lot of it, you know, just, just I mean, there were some open shots, but there was a lot of good defense on both ends. No question about it. And for the Golden Hurricane, down by one to start the second half, but you uh, quickly were able to get into the, back into the lead. Yeah, good drive by Sterling and a finish uh, with, with a layup with his left. Uh, you know, there weren't going to be any easy buckets in this ball game, and, and that's, that's a nice kickstand move by Martins on the drive and keeping his foot down and finish on the, using the rim. There wasn't a whole lot of foul trouble, but Wade Davis was one guy that was in foul trouble for Kansas State, and you attacked him well. Yeah, and he, he got back on the court. That was a nice uh, attack close out there by Kern and finish. Uh, like I said, baskets were, were hard to come by. And this is a set play after a timeout, uh, fake the eight, dribble handoff and uh, Kern with a nice finish. And this is uh, probably Kern Scott's uh, best overall game in, in perhaps in two years. Yeah, he played tough against a really good defensive team and made some crucial buckets. And it's a nice pass by Chris Barnes. He's falling out of bounds and, and a good finish. But you, you have to be strong and aggressive when you're driving these guys. And that was a terrific play by Jariah Horn because he got the rebound on that play and took it coast to coast. Yeah, he's very skilled, you know, he's uh, Obviously, you see his ball skills there and then his finish ability. And the Golden Hurricane at that point, cutting, uh, actually taking the lead at 38-35. Now, you would get a five-point lead, which in this defensive struggle was a pretty big lead. Yes, and then there you see Elijah with the, you know, attacking and uh, driving. And we're up three right here, but uh, great finish. And you, could, you knew it was going to come down to the wire here. Then you get a steal and a layup, and your lead would get down to five. And again, one of the few transition buckets, but Curran Scott converts, and you're up by five. And like I said, in the defensive struggle, that seems like a big lead. Yeah, and then he came back. You know, they hadn't made a lot of threes, but uh, Snead hits two, I think, here late. That one cut it, to tie the game back up. And this is a big-time drive by, by, by uh, Quan and, and the crossover and attacking uh, of Dean Wade there. Gives you the lead at 42-40. to 40. And then moments later, you get that five-point lead back again. And a nice play again by Jariah Horn. Yeah, just a nice pick and pop. And, and Jariah gives us a little bit of that, what Junior gave us last year, ability for a big guy that can step out and make a three. And there you see our fans. And that was such a big part of the success of this ball game. Yeah, no question. And that, that was a play where you almost got the turnover, and then it results in a three-pointer by Snead. And look at the time, 2.20 remaining, and they've gotten the lead for the first time in a long time. But then Martin Zigbano with a really patient play here. Yeah, that jump hook we've been wanting Martin to use a lot. and. Uh, but uh, off, the, off the block a little bit, and great finish by him. 153 remaining in the game, and nobody scores the rest of the way, including that final play at 47-46. Your team walled it up defensively and won the game. Yeah, we had you know uh, a couple of fouls to give there, and, and kind of shrunk the game a little bit, and uh, uh, nice defensive stance, stance there at the end, and then 
obviously see our, our student section on the court celebrating with our players. Yeah, it was a terrific scene, no question about it. And uh, the, the students were important in this game, uh, no doubt. And you, there you see Curran Scott with a new season high, 14 points. Martins was important for you, and uh, you held them to 31% shooting. You can't play much better defense than that, Coach. That, and that's what the game boiled down to, you know, the, that end of the court, both, both teams getting stops and uh, uh, very proud of our guys and how we competed. Um, you know, it, it, was, it wasn't in terms of numbers a great game, but in terms of the win, it was a big win for us in terms of how we finished the game. And a big week for the Hurricane, getting to 7-3. and three. We'll be back with more in a moment on the Frank Haith Show. That's big time. I'm so, so proud of you. You know, been doing this thing for a long time. You guys found a way. Found a way. How was our defense? Because yeah. yeah. that's what it's all about. Defending and rebounding, the other stuff will take care of itself. <clears throat> Everybody that played contributed. I mean, you, you did what you needed to do. And that's what's important, OK? Welcome back to the Frank Hayes Show. On our feature segment, Coach, uh, this is something that's true and dear to your heart. It's the Backpack Bash and something that you and your wife, Pam, put together. Yeah, we, we did the same thing in Columbia and in Miami. We were part of the Boys and Girls Club, and we wanted to give and went back to school, Backpack Bash, you know. So uh, we, we've been doing this for years, and it is great to get him back in for our guys to be involved with giving back to the community. Absolutely, and this occurred, of course, in late August when everybody's getting back to school. Let's take a look at TU again, the Hurricane basketball program involved in the community. You know, we, we uh, uh, celebrated about 60 uh, children from different Boys and Girls Club throughout the city. And um, it's something I think we can, you know, we call it back a boys and girls club back to school bash. They all start school tomorrow, so they're going to backpack with some uh, pe uh, book books and paper and pencils and pens and erasers, um, along with a certificate uh, celebrating their their good efforts this summer. Uh, we're just trying to give back to the community, especially because they support us so much. So it's the least we could do to give back. It's a, a partnership I hope we can build on and our guys being involved with the Boys and Girls Club. And it's about, it's twofold. It's about, you know, us giving back to the community, but also being a part of that great organization. I mean, they come out to every game and they cheer for us. And it's not, it's like we can't do as much just because of a season. But in the summertime, off season, we do as much as we can to play with these kids. And just because I know when I was back home, we didn't have anything like this. So for us to give back, that's, a, that's huge for me. I think part of what we want our young people here at Tulsa to understand about, you know, community and about giving back to the community. And, you know, we've done several of these things uh, throughout our time here and it's something that we're, we're going to continue to groups to continue to do. But uh, this is a special night. I think it's something we can build on. I'm excited about Richard White and his involvement and helping with us with this. And, I think it's something we can continue to do with our players and, and I'm anxious to see us get out there in the fall and do a clinic with them and something in the spring also. We're back on the Frank Haith Show as Tulsa gets ready for New Orleans coming up at home on Thursday. And coach, they often talk about, hey, how do you react after a loss? How do you bounce back? There's also the issue of how do you react to victory? How do you react to success? It's a big game Thursday. Isn't it, it? it is, and, and New Orleans is, is is a team that's very capable. You know, they just beat South Alabama, who beat Tulane by 20. Mm. So we we know this team's very capable. We played them a couple years ago. I have uh, they will come in here and they play fast. They're athletic. They're very gifted in terms of their their talent level, and so. We got to have great mindset going into this game on Thursday. And hopefully another great crowd coming up on Thursday at the Rental Center as TU continues this season after a magical week at the Rental Center. That'll wrap it up for the Frank Haith Show. We'll talk to you next week. The Frank Haith Show, brought to you by Don Thornton Cadillac, Pepsi, River Spirit, TTCU, The Credit Union, and St. Francis Health System.
The Frank Haith Show has been a presentation of Golden Hurricane Sports Properties and a King Vision production.